Hello, welcome back to the MeRC channel, and this is Dave, and you, you take a look at the clip behind me here. You'll see I'm trying to make a left-hand turn with my Aero Scout, and the Radex flight controller is trying to make it go to the right by pushing the rudder that way. And I think it's because of the P-gain feedback from the flight controller. So when I'm trying to go left, the flight controller is trying to level the plane with the rudder and make it go right. So to demonstrate how the yaw PID affects the rudder when I'm trying to make turns. Let's just go ahead and go into the PID page. I'll go ahead and connect. Go to PID tuning. Okay, let's just run this yaw up for the rudder way up so we can do a little demo. Going to bring it up to about 200. There we go right there. All right, let's save it. And disconnect and do the demo. Okay, so now let's do the demo with the yaw gain turned up to 200. And I'm also going to go ahead and bank a little bit of left turn. Let's go put it in angle mode. And then I'll bank a little left turn with this eraser right here. Like that, so it's holding the stick over. And you can see right there that the ailerons are moved up. Okay, now let's try it. I thought maybe if I was activating the turn that the rudder wouldn't move, but you can see, let's see, I hope you can see right there that the rudder, when I do that left turn, the rudder is trying to make it go right. So it still does it even when you're banking a turn to the left, the rudder wants to go right. Now let's turn it down to zero and we'll try the same thing again, just turning down the proportional or the P gain on the yaw to zero. When I run the rudder demo, like this spinning around making a left hand turn, nothing happens at all. But of course I can still use the rudder with the stick down here. So I can still make turns. My rates are still the same. So let's just go ahead and take it out and fly it and see if it does better compared to the way it used to. It's around 10.30 in the morning. And we're in the beginning of the COVID-19 self-quarantine period. Let's see if we can get the recorder going. They haven't mowed the grass as much as usual. All right. Put it down here. Let's see how many satellites I got in the goggles here. I got 12 already. That's enough to fly. All right. Arming protocol. Confirm GPS before launch. All right, I'm going to take off in angle mode. Angle mode on. Props working. All right, here we go. Get it up there. Now I'll make a nice slow turn. I'm going to add a little manual rudder oh that comes around nicely now and now i'm just using the ailerons to bank and banking around that was a nice smooth bank now let's use a little rudder to come around that's looking good. I'm going to use rudder again. I'm just using rudder only now. Just steering with rudder only. So I use rudder only on that turn and the stabilization kept it level.
Now I'm using a little of both. I'm really liking the way it flies. Let's go down here and then I'll turn on the auto trim. Banking around. I'm going to take my hands off the sticks. And I'm going to flip on auto trim. trim. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. Okay, that's enough. All you need is two seconds. Coming over the top. All right, everything's working great. This is all in angle mode. I'm going to turn auto trim off. Auto trim off. I'm going to go behind me here. I'm not noticing any loss of signal. Of course, I won't know until I review and see if the RSSI dropped. But we are testing out the new receiver, Easy UHF receiver, which is a four channel light, and the dipole antenna. Switch from monopole to a dipole. I also have that capacity, oh, excuse me. I also have that capacitor on the battery input. And I don't know what kind of difference that's making. Okay. All's looking really good. Now I'm not sensing any wind at all today, so that was perfect for doing the auto trim and auto-tune, but, but I can't do them both at the same time because I have to save the settings. Coming around. That's a little too high to land, I think. Let's bring it around here. I got it really the props really spinning slow now. Give it a little, a touch more. Let's bring it around here. Now we'll land it. And that is a perfect landing. So I call that a success. Now I'm not going to disarm because I want to save those auto trim settings. Okay, let's check the auto trim settings after the flight we just did. I'm going to go ahead and plug in the USB cable and connect and then we'll go to servos and this is what we got now uh, hmm. looks pretty much the same so I guess it's happy with the trim these numbers are identical and I think the 1573 is that different I don't know. I'm going to go ahead and save them anyway. All right, saved. Now we can disconnect. Oh yeah, and I just wanted to show you that the rudder was on zero as far as the yaw. So in summation, I think the easy UHF mods that I did with the four channel light receiver and the dipole antenna seemed to work out pretty good. Although there were a couple of places during the flight, I noticed that the signal got down into 80s, like here, here, and here. And then I think there was one place where it dropped down as low as 78, right here. So to improve that, I could put one of these dipole antennas onto my radio and just fasten it back here. I think the problem is I hold the radio kind of like this flat and this antenna here isn't orientated the right way it should be straight up and down so if I was to put one of these on then I could get the, the antenna going vertically which would be better in alignment with this antenna also you might have noticed 
that the camera was better in focus than it was in my other flights. It used to look kind of fuzzy and I went ahead and focused the camera. A lot of times when they come from the factory they're not really in focus and it's hard to tell at first until you see it in the air and see things are kind of fuzzy and what you can do is use the focus chart that's this thing right here and what you do is try to get this center part as much in focus as possible so you can see the tips of these triangles going into the middle and that's what I did I just uh, got back about 20 feet and adjusted the camera till that was in focus so overall any interference that I got with the video was probably just a result of when I was flying overhead and this antenna was straight up over the top of me again if the antennas aren't in alignment you'll you'll see a little bit of interference so pretty good so far as far as the zero p gain on the rudder that worked perfect it's flying nice and flat and level now everything looks good so I think the next thing I want to do is probably take it for a longer range flight and see how it does further away and we can better judge how the antennas are are performing but overall I just I thought the flight was good so you got any questions or comments put them under the video and we'll talk to you next time